Ready to go at the dome. The Blues and the Tigers. Jumping high, French got a hand on it. Out of there, Coglin. Good handball to Johnson. Long ball forward and inside 50 entry already for the Tigers. Chopped out by Whitnell. Off to Camparelli. A couple of the players who are up for grabs at the end of the year. Simpson down the line to Lappin. There's the other one. Jeez. Getting involved, all three of them straight away. Lappin's kick forward. Going to bounce in front of Chambers. Here's big Brendan Favola. Handball on, back to Simpson. Left foot, kick forward from that player. Marked on the line by Graham. Just wanting to get the angle right there, Mark Graham. Kicks a sloppy kick off the boot. Didn't quite nail it. And straight into the waiting arms of Fisher. Not the sort of mistake you want to see early in the piece. You don't want to give a side that have not enjoyed any great success half a sniff and uh, turnovers and mistakes like that sometimes can be the kickstart that, that sides like Carlton need. Well, last time these two sides met, the Tigers opened with the first 12 goals of the game. This kick here can put an end to that very early on. Fisher, there's the angle. He's got to nurse this one through. You like it. First is there for the Blues in the opening two minutes. Some good spirit being shown there too from the Blues. Nice for Favola to get a touch early in the piece. I think the last time we had him on a Sunday, it was a pretty barren afternoon. That's just a horrible mistake from Mark Graham. He's had a very good month, Brad, uh, young Brad Fisher for the Blues. Probably he and Waite, the two standouts. And that's a nice start. First goal on the board for the Blues through Fisher. Nice start for them. Perfect bounce again in the centre. Simmons. This is Carrazzo. Out the back. Looking for weight. Big Ray Hall's there as well. Lappin goes to ground. Hall goes to ground. Newman gets up off the ground and did well. Free kick off the ball. And it's going to the Blues. Inside the 50. Drilling ball. Missed its target. Betts, the excitement machine, gets the handball away to wait. Kick on the way is a goal. Blues start with a couple. Another, here's the other player that has had a, a good year in the face of some pretty tough times is Jared Waite. Eddie Betts, nice work this. Unselfish. Sometimes the small forwards that don't get a lot of footy, when they do get the footy in their hands, they think they have to have a shot to try and justify their spot. Well, that piece of selflessness won't go unrecognised in the Carlton box. You don't have to kick them. You can set them up as well, and that's uh, some nice work. Three minutes of play. Two goals, Blues, Fisher and Waite. And can they turn the tide on what happened last time and get a big haul of Blues before the Tigers get cranking Stevens? Coughlin's got the job on him today by the looks. And that'll be difficult. Coughlin's had a pretty good year in his return year to football. Not great start as the Tigers. That is a statistic that will be added to in the first few minutes here. Terry Wallace would be aware of, no doubt. They have started very slowly. Simmons doing the ruck work, which means Noble starting on the bench for the Tigers. The other Ruckman kick into the Blues, forward 50 again. Waite, Favola and Hall all colliding. Hall went out in the end of Newman. Got a big job today on Lappin. Coglin gets it to Tuck. What a revelation he has been this year. Oh, Thurston, Hurstfield gets the ball long. Thought I'd put that one in for you, James. Liked it, bro. Whitnell able to get it towards half forward out by himself found a bit of the ball on the uh, Stevens will have to come back no advantage from the mark or go against him in fact he paid the mark in the end I think yep paid it the other way Blues fans unhappy Coglin's got the footy got it to Newman now some hard running through big Ray Hall Loping left foot delivery forward. Stafford at the back. Ball bounces in front of him in the concession from Lance Whitnell. Gary.
going back to that stat you talked about earlier, I want you to put your coach's hat on for a second. Mm. You've got it nearby at all times. Why are the Tigers slow out of the blocks? Is this intensity? Well, once it becomes a pattern, it becomes almost self-fulfilling, um, James. I'm sure they've tried plenty of things, but they haven't got the right just yet. Whitnell to Simpson. Like a good coach, he's oh. always got the answers. Off to French and now Stevens. Beautiful ball from Stevens inside the 50. You like to get on the end of the prune from Stevens. And Longmuir takes a very nice mark straight in front. Well, Nick Stevens has he's had to do it pretty tough for a couple of years too. He's left a side that went on to win a flag and now finds himself at the side that he's going to win, if that's the right word, the wooden spoon. So uh, you'd like to see some success for him. This is a rollicking start for the Blues. Longmuir kicks their third. Well, it's a tempo thing at the moment. What Carlton want to do is continue on in this vein, obviously. What the Tigers, I suppose, need to do is just slow it up a bit, maybe get a number behind the footy and consolidate over the next five minutes, see if they can't get one on the board. But right now, all of the momentum's with Carlton, and they deserve it. Their attack on the footy's been first rate, and they've been able to convert with some of their medium-sized small or to smaller forwards. All right, well, three straight goals in a row for the Blues. What does that man do now, Gary? Does he have to change any of his planning during the week, or does he go with what he's got? He's had a bit of practice at being slow starters, Brian, so I think he, he obviously stays with what he's got, but maybe just one of his experienced players behind the footy. Just need to get a bit of possession at the moment, Gary. They've had very little possession time as Tivendale finds Simmons, drops an easy one. He recovers, ready for the left foot. Coglin over the top. Deledio said he's got pace. He'll take French on. He'll run to 30 and drill home the Tigers first. <laughs> oh, 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 the Kai oh. Abram flyer. Well, he would be very much up there in contention for the NAB Rising Star, this boy, the number one draft pick. The NAB Rising Star. Some fools still get it wrong, but uh, this man has got some talent. He's being challenged by Ryan Griffin from the Western Bulldogs, that's for sure. But sometimes you forget that these boys are only a year out of under-18 football and they've been able to make the step into the big time. And he looks very much at home. The man who is putting the town of Kyabram on the footy map, <laughs> Brett Deledio, on the run from 30, kicks the Tigers first. Nice to watch him playing footy. Back in the centre. French with a little hand on it. To the back and tambling. Tried to step through and ended up getting through. To half forward and Richo. A long way out in front of Lance Whitnell. Over the top. And the mark taken by Coglin. Falling backwards. Well, big Barnaby French in the middle of the ground. He is a big man. And sometimes you forget that the skills of the game include tackling. You can't allow little Richie Tamling to waltz through your big arms like that because this is the result. Stevens is caught offside. Coglin, his opponent, runs into the dangerous space. Costly mistake. For the Tigers, second in a minute. Kick on the way. He's leaning. I reckon it's there. Let's wait on the goal umpire. It is. They settled nicely, the Tigers. They, uh, they got some talent. But have a look at this. Got the tap out. Now, he was gone for all money, Richard Tambling. But he got through. And that is what cost them so very dearly. A lot of space there for Richard. And that's the worry, too, you think, as this game wears on. He may be just too fleet of foot for Lance Whitnell. And then Coglin took the opportunity to run forward and kick the goal. So the Tigers now finding a bit of the ball. And we're only nine minutes into this game. We've already had five goals kicked. So an attacking, free-flowing game of football here at the Dome on offer today. Simmons out of the middle. Able to get it inside 50. Whitnell attacking the ball. and Probably didn't realise he had another step or two before he had to get rid of it. Got rid of it quicker than he wanted to. Here's the man with the boots. Richie Tambling. Have a look at those. And the stripe on those shorts, somewhat towards the rear end, normally on the side, but <laughs> thought he had them on back to front for the moment, but they're right. Simmons also offering a nice colour of boot. Kick, beautiful to Cracker. And a low mark for Cracker. 
Well, he's at uh, Corey McGrath and also Camp Rally. They're just uh, slowly settling themselves and finding their opponent, but that's too much space. Far too much space. Some good form shown by this man over the last month or so, Gary. 21 goals for the year so far as a small forward. Plays in the mid a bit. And here he is lining up from a difficult angle. Cracker comes in. This one's to the near side and offline. The Tigers 2-2-14. Two, two, the Blues 3 straight 18. One of Brian's favourites. The man they call Crack has had an excellent month and a half. Simmons got the handball away to Tuck. Tigers have really settled after the early blue onslaught. Johnson fell as he kicked the ball. Stafford came hard from the back. Tambling tries to step his way through. Claimed by a nest of blues. There'll be a bounce. Umpires in the red today, Brian. Why would that be as opposed to the white? Well, because it's not a conflicting color, color Gary. I can't see any red in the uniform of Richmond or Carlton out there, and I think it's a great choice. Lots of white in both of them too, Brian. Oh, is there? <laughs> one of them's dark navy and the other one's black. Yeah. Ball picked up beautifully by Carrazzo. Simpson's been good early. Inside the 50 go the Blues again. He was taken to ground. Big mark taken, not going to matter. Free kick down the ground. The mark was taken. He feels he's been denied the mark. He... Troy Longmuir, former Demon and Docker. He, this fella can play footy, don't worry. He is as courageous as they come. His body's just let him down. Already kicked one, should kick his second. And he has. The Blues get their fourth. What you're finding here, boys, is that the, the Blues have been a lot more unpredictable as they go forward. I mean, so much focus would go straight to Brendan Favola. Obviously, he's been the number one man for such a long time, but right now, they have really mixed it up. They've got Fisher, they've got Wait, and now they've got Longmuir, who are all prepared to be long targets or leading targets. So the Richmond defenders, they just need to play everyone as the most dangerous forward. Dennis Pagan on the phone. Wouldn't be too many instructions coming down at this stage, because his mob are going real well. With four straight, Longmuir has got a couple. Gary not happy with the red of the umpires today. Hyde, a significant runner for the Tigers, been pinged there, had an opportunity, said the umpire. The Blues looking for advantage, none on offer. Kudafidis and Stevens out of the middle. Stevens, as James mentioned, always precise by foot, and that no exception. Well, once again, you see uh, Favola not the number one target. You've got Fisher, who's really presenting up hard, and and wait. This is staggering that you can find someone like uh, Nick Stevens out there with so much room and so much space. If Coughlin's a mock player on him, he has to be tight. Started well last week, this man as well, Fisher, and has done it again here today. From just inside the 50. Beautiful looking kick. Blues have got five straight. Oh, it's a fantastic start. And you know the theory on forward line play is that the more options you've got, the more people that you've got confidence to go to, the harder it is for opposition defences. They've all just got to play honestly. Can't allow the two-on-one. They can't allow to drop off their opponent to go and help out someone else because the minute you do that, your man becomes a target. The Western Bulldogs have done that magnificently in the past month or so. Maybe that's the blueprint for the Blues. The Blues have gone inside their forward 50 five times and kicked five goals. That represents efficient football, Gary. Simmons. 100 I dare say, Jim. Just about. Tuck. No, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> OK. Chambers has it on the wing. They look good, Carlton. Forward to Stevens with room to move again. And a free kick has been picked out. It's going to go White. Waits way. Brendan Favola went on and kicked the goal, but the footy's got to come back. It's Ray Hall, I think, by the looks of it. So that's what happens again, because they're all, you know, legitimate forwards that the defenders start to get a bit edgy. They start to pull jumpers and try just to, to keep them under control. Free kicks paid. Jared Waite from long range has connected nicely with the ball. It's going all the way. 
Boy. The Blues off to a blistering start. Oh, what a start. What a flyer. Fisher, Longmuir and White. Three medium sizes that perhaps haven't had too much footy funneled through them while you had Whitnell and Favola there. Well, that wasn't working. They weren't playing good enough footy with Whitnell and Favola in the key post. So Dennis Pagan has just swung that all around and he's got three different targets up there. And right now, it's been a master stroke. So Gary, now five inside 50s, six goals for the Blues. How do we assess that? Oh, what? It went inside 50 without a goal, did it? Well, you kicked it from outside. Oh, he did, Gary. And then it went inside. That's where it's at, Thank Gary. You, Gary. Here we go. Into the back half for the Blues. Richardson's tackle on Whitman was effective. Cracker somehow got rid of the tackle. Campbell, handball. This one will be held up. I think we'll have a ball up here. And by the way, the Blues with three goal kickers so far in the game. Each of those have kicked two inside 15 minutes of footy. Yeah, can you have a goal without it going inside 50? Well, it went over the 50, if you exactly. like, Gary. Never touched so it, Gary. It went in the 50. No. Never actually entered into it, Gary. <laughs> touched the ground. <laughs> The interesting stat call that one. Get confirmation on that later, Gary, although I'm with JB. <laughs> Cracker. Out wide, finds Tivendale. He's a left footer, trying to work back onto that now. Feeds the handball to Hyde, also a left footer. What will he do? Can go short in the pocket of Johnson. Teague was aware of that and did well. So two left footers wrong footed there, if you like, and made a bit of a mess of it. Just having a look at our comprehensive uh, statistical data. Six inside 50s. Six goals. Funny about that. There's the ladder positions of these two teams. Uh, both ends of the ladder not playing like it at the moment. Hate to be wrong. Coaches. Yep. <laughs> Gary just Out trying to intimidate. Uh, Crack up. Man. Look at the space Richardson's got here. McGrath ran at it. Took Richo on and won on that occasion. He had Whitnell. He said, no, I've got the legs. I'll run with the ball, Lance. You form the guard of honour as I come past. McGrath from half back to half forward. Let himself down with the kick. In they go, Tivendale learnt the hard one. Bowden got the job on Favola, short ball. Found his man in Campbell. He sets him up through the corridor. Tambling with speed, finds Tuck. Needs to move it quickly. Richardson's got room wide. That's the direction it goes. Chipping in though, just in front was Hilton. Plays on, touch, said the umpire. A chipping ball over the top. Won't get to Tampling. Had to meet it. Here's Delidio, ground level. Tigers need something here. Hilton soccers it. Stafford went over. Hilton had another crack at it. Might have just got it. He likes it. Tigers have kicked their third, I think. Let's wait on it. Goal! Camparelli not happy. Well, a couple of goals. Two of the three goals that Richmond have got have been as a result of mistakes for Carlton. Not sure what Campo was unhappy about. He thought he'd touch it, I guess. Looked to be over there on that uh, from that view. McGrath ran the footy beautifully. Or it was a Kratzer that rang the footy beautifully. Uh, down the outer wing, McGrath, McGrath was. McGrath was. Yep. Did all the hard work and then kicked into the man on the mark when it should have been going deep inside their 450. Ball rebounded, goal. The Tigers get a much needed goal and are staying with a red hot Blues outfit. First term at the Telstra Dome. The bouncing on the hole has been fantastic. Richmond with the clearance. To half forward, Hyde out of position. Waite, who's kicked a couple, gets it back to Whitnell. Lance with lots of time. Goes looking for Fisher. Vets got a hand in there. Works Richo's well knocked out. The Blues. Low ball forward from Vets. He is out cold. Still the Blues battle on. Now Vets helped over the line. We'll have a boundary throw in. Let's get back to centre wing where Matthew Richardson stretches on. He looked to be, it looked to be some sort of a, a he, fit, maybe, or...? He was out before he hit the ground, Gary. Have a look at the collision here with the head. Bang. Oh, dear. Chris Jones is down the boundary right in front of him, Jonesy. It was right in front of me. He was out before he hit the ground. His head actually didn't hit the ground. It was sort of stuck a, above. You can see here the contact with Fisher's hip. The stretcher they signalled straight to the boundary line to get the stretcher out, and the play will be stopped here. The crowd's just seen it. So we've just got a little break in play. This is where the medical teams become so important. We're very, very fortunate to have uh, the best in the business looking after our elite AFL footy players. 
This uh, makes it pretty interesting now. Let's hope Matthew Richardson's OK. Looks like he's, uh, he's certainly breathing very deeply at the moment, but it's like his eyes are open, Richo. Well, that's, as we always point out, Gary, a must now for the doctors whenever they have a suspected yep. concussion. The Standard neck brace practice. goes on. But that was... It was courageous of Richo to back back into that situation. Now the Richmond coaching staff have got a bit of a job on their hands, Gary. So how do you see it panning out? Richo's going to, well, maybe spend the rest of the game off the ground, but certainly some time. What do you do in his absence? Well, as we have a look at it, again, it uh, needs some rejigging, doesn't it? It becomes such an important part of it. Greg Stafford remains a tall option down there. You're going to have to find another a forward capable. I guess some pressure now goes on the Cracker and also Delidio. Delidio. Pettifer. Yep. These sorts of fellas. I mean, you've seen what we've seen already what Carlton are capable of with a smaller, more mobile forward line, so it's not the end of the world. Might even put Noble into the ruck at some stage and maybe Simmons to centre half forward and maybe have to go with just the one ruckman for the rest of the day. Well, they've got Stafford down there as well. Yep. So between Stafford and Noble, you'd think that they'd be capable and maybe play Simmons a bit deeper, but. This is taking a little bit of time. Well, I'll tell you why it is, Gary. You're going to take a shot of the van coming around in a sec. I mean, this thing's got to travel faster. It just, it's treacle slow. It's taken it half an hour to get where it is. Well, they didn't ridiculous. fully charge the batteries, well, I would think. Well, I mean, these boys are going to do the right thing. But, I mean, if we're going to have these motorised carts... Surely got to get out there in a hurry. I think it's a reasonable point. I think both of you make a reasonable point. I think they forgot to plug it in. Yeah. Overnight. Well, uh, the uh, trainers, the Richmond doctors, will now put put him on this super fast buggy. Look at this buggy driver, Fairnigan. Well, he hasn't found second at the moment. That's the problem. He's just got it in the very low gear. Oh, they, no. Just think, keep going, boys. Well, the game can't start now until Richo's right up the race or, and all the buggies off, so they might as well take advantage of the buggy which they now choose to do so the the blues off to a flyer six goals straight perhaps the most important player in richmond now off the ground and unlikely to play any part in proceedings this gives carlton it's probably back to an even money bet of course, Gasper out before the game started. There he is. So the bookends, if you like, the two big boys at either end of the ground, not don't playing. Don't underestimate Mark Chaffee's um, contribution over the past six weeks. He's been a very valuable player. So there's certainly a window of opportunity for the Blues here. These are, Gary, I'd imagine, the sort of wins, though, that really set up a club when you're down and out and blokes missing and you still conjure a way of getting over the line. It's a big test for these young Tigers now. Well, it was the making, wasn't it, of uh, probably St Kilda, the turnaround in their fortunes when Nick Revolt went off with that shoulder injury and Justin Kaczynski had a look at it and said, "Radio, time for me. And he has not looked back, and neither have the St Kilda Footy Club. So someone out there, whether it be Simmons or Stafford, needs to say, OK, I'll do a Kaczynski here and carry us on into September. Well, eventually going to get play started. We'll have news on Richo as soon as we can get it for you. It's inside the Blues forward 50. And the Tigers now have to really draw a line in the sand. Handball from Campbell. Coglin to the outer side. Tambling and Simpson. Good mark. Beautiful mark, but he's run himself into a bit of a corner. It's well done there by Simpson. Really well done. Tackling's been great for the Blues. The pressure from the Blues has been enormous. This one's inside 50. Sets it up for the high ball. Longmuir Rose. First field out the back door. Campbell. And now Graham, the former Hawk, under a bit of pressure. Just nailed it inside the boundary line. And Tivendale happy to find the white line there. Where well, Wayne Campbell becomes important too, I reckon, Brian. And, and Jim, you just watch him now. He's uh, been a leader and remains a leader. Just reckon he'll be rallying the troops out there at the moment. Becomes such an important player. 16-point lead to the Blues as we're well into red time here. Coglin, Kane Johnson. Don't underestimate his import importance as the designated leader out there to this outfit. And a boundary throw in between the interchange gates. There is Shane Tuck and McGrath. Simmons is a player that's now assumed that role of uh, Richardson. So Whitnell's gone to Simmons. Stafford into the ruck and they've gone smaller with Moore into the goal square. Stafford, beautiful palm down Campbell. Quick kick. 
No result there, but out of bounds on the full. In fact, and it'll be a free kick Kurt Afidi's way on the wing. The veteran now, Anthony Kudafidis, Premiership player and great Carlton player. Long ball forward, good mark taken by Greg Stafford. That's what they want to see from big Greg Stafford. Drills it to Campbell. He pumps it long. This player is vital. Coglin. Claimed by Kudafit. He's helped over the line of Andrew Throwing. Now, before they know it, Carlton, Wayne Campbell will rack up eight or ten touches. So someone's got to put some serious work into him. He's just standing off the back of this pack on his own. No one really gone to him at the moment. And there he is. Chambers just standing nearby, but didn't seem all that interested. Bentick, who just came onto the ground. Dribbled that one for Prendergast. Not good. Down below the knees. Crack up. There he is. Another one, Gary. Over the top, looking to draw Pettifer, didn't come. McGrath, tackled by Kane Johnson. We'll have a ball up centre for Tigers. Time left on the clock is seven minutes, even though 26 has expired in the first quarter. Long break because of the Richardson KO. Wayne Campbell's played 50% of the game, half the game time. He's had eight possessions, second only to Mark Coughlin. Amazing ability to find the ball and get in the right spot. Johnson to Tivendale. Low buzzer. Simmons, Pettifer. Or was it not? It was, in fact, Moore. And Moore was able to slide in just onto the ground in that full forward position. In the absence of Richo, will line up for goal. Well, it's a dangerous kick, the one that goes over the intended target. I reckon that the forward needs to be aware. That was meant for Simmons. But if the forward, the next forward is aware, not often will he have a defender playing him as tightly. Kelvin Moore here. Hasn't kicked a goal. In 05. And he played the one other game other than this, and this one's hit that post on the right hand side. Mm. A little bit of left to right curl about it. And the Tigers desperately need one here to stay in touch at quarter time. Scott Camparelli. Good kick. Livingston. Go back. That's not such a good kick to Camparelli. Slides it over the top to Bentick. He can go by hand or by foot. He chooses the ladder, steers it in the long mirror direction. In fact, it's Scotland. The former magpie, Heath Scotland. Just sits it up. Fisher, can he fly it from the back? No one in the end got anywhere near it. And Graham took a very clever mark sliding across the front of the pack. Crack up. In the move, the ball just tightened up somewhat from the opening 10 minutes that we saw. Petter for now. Up on the wing, playing as a high half forward. Tambling. On the right boot. Drilling ball. Simmons elevates. Couldn't hold the mark off. Hands more. Was tackled. And umpire said he should have disposed of it earlier. And so the advantage played here for the Blues as Teague out of defence will find Betts. He ended up with it. Oh, in they're board. On. They're on. Bentick's doing some hard running. Handball over the top to the superstar Kudafidis. Closing on 30 out. And he kicks the goal. Gee whiz, I was just watching the play unfold and didn't really see how Kudafidis just snuck out the back, but they had more than one player free, so the Tigers need to turn their head more often and it looked like they may have been spectating a bit because look at Kuda Feeney's out the back there. Ben Tick a couple of very important touches but uh, maybe Anthony Kuda Feeney's could be, well might be Campbell's man maybe. Seven straight the Blues have kicked in this opening quarter. That's right, seven straight. The Tigers 3-3 three, three, and Rizzo off the ground on a stretcher get an update shortly out of the middle Johnson to Simmons picked it up beautifully he's a left footer remember work this one around the corner here's Pettifer in front gains possession Teague all over him did well Campbell now beautiful handball out the side to Tivendale he shapes up on the left and that one's out of bounds on the full 
wonder whether Joel Bowden now, whether they can afford to leave him playing on Brennan Favola. Favola looks, he's not in good touch. He looks as if he's playing half a decoy role at the moment. Richo off the ground, they're missing a bit of rebound run from Bowden across halfback. No one even standing the mark there for the Tigers. Simpson was able to walk away. Camparelli to Scotland. Scotland's gone to Campbell. This man's getting a fair bit of it. Scott Camparelli. Prendergast. Long and direct the Blues. Here comes Favola. Big climb at the back. Over the top of his own player. Unable to take the mark. Two on one situation. Cracker's going to have to work hard. In and under. Andy Cracker. Wait there as well. And Cracker did well and got it over the line. Possession time. Surprisingly in favour of the Tigers here, Gary. Indeed. But efficiency has been the word for the Blues in this first quarter. Seven straight. Stafford doing the ruck work. Brennagast there with him. Ball was pinned to Coglin by Bentick. And we'll have a ball up on the old turf area there. And see the old and the new where they meet. Tivendale off and Graham back on. Three and a half remaining in the first quarter. Good crowd in at the Dome today. Tuck to Pettifer. Great saving, lunging tackle by Cuda. Delidio wanted a free and Teague ran it out of play. Teague on Pettifer. Pettifer's got to get busy. He's uh, been in and out of the team. David Teague. Leg speed was his worry, so Kane Pettifer's got to get on his bike a bit. Stafford pushing Prendergast out of the way. Scotland with a nice smother. Stafford quick hands. Pettifer around the body. Simmons caught behind. Nudges Whittle out of the way. He infringed the umpire. Sure. Don't think so, Gary. Umpire Kieran Nichols will just give the free to Whittle instead of push. Thought it was in the side, but it was a little bit high. Why would that not be a 50? Should be. Big dig. Big diggers is on. Digby Morale. Whitnell to Digby Murrell. And have a bounce, the former kangaroo down the medallion club wing. Who defeaties talking about players that have got busy. Inboard, Carrazzo. Low to Betts. Got hands to it but couldn't hang on. Yeah. Morrell's got another one. First field went without it. Top claim from behind will get a free. Just that last inside 50 for Carlton, the young player, he went to Favola again when Favola had two or three on him. I mean, they've already shown that Fisher, Longmuir and Wake can kick goals. It was just one of those ones where the big-name player draws a footy. Tuck out wide to Hilton, who has no one around him, so he's able to take three bounces. Get around Longmuir pretty easy. And Fisher, far too easy. Drilling ball to Campbell. Sets it up. Here they go, the Tigers. Hardikin. The one-two back from Hilton, now over the top. Paul from beyond the arc. Long ball, Simmons got in good position. Free Was kick. he paid? Free kick, holding the man. Pull the jumper, I think you'll find that Big Lance was in a bit of strife and just had a bit of a tug at the back of Simmons' jumper. There you go. And look, in two or three contests, he's shown that he is going to cause Lance a few problems. If he presents, if he takes the bit between his teeth, and wants to be the best player on the ground. Sometimes I wonder, Troy Simmons, he might not realise just how good a player he could be. Important goal here for the Tigers near quarter time. Simmons directly in front, 20 metres out. Nothing difficult about this. It's just a matter of getting good contact with the ball to the boot. And he did not do that. Shiss. And that is unbelievable. Missed it by not a little bit, but a long way. It's almost your shank front. Yeah. Sure. Just dropped it on the outside of the boot. That is horrible. Horrible. Scotland. And the Blues to the outer side. Bentick's out there. Carrazzo as well. And the boundary line to win it. You work hard up the field, Brian, to get your key forwards with the ball in their hands. 25 out directly in front. Got to convert. 
Well, won just 20 of 68 quarters played this season. Hasn't been a great year for them. Most footy fans are aware of that. Deledio. Good work to the skipper. This is a good kick. Sets it out in front of Simmons. He can have another crack at it, although this time he's 45 out. What happens here, Big Brian? What goes through his mind? Does he rack with self-doubt or does he go back to the process? Be a bit of self-doubt, but it's a different kick. It's one that he really has to put everything into to kick it from here, Gary. So it's probably a different style thing where he can get all his energy going forward where the other one, he was just trying to nurse it through from 25, 30 metres out. But he it. would be in two minds about that last drop of the ball. Let's have a look at him then. Big kick for Simmons and the Tigers. Stuttering run. Left football. Did the identical thing. Away to the left again, Brian. It's routine. And it is the execution of the skill. You're winning the footy, that's the main thing. Just run to some forward line work down there. Blues. Mm. Would be liking what they see over the last couple of minutes, I would have thought. And they'll just control the ball here. The runner will have got out during that shot for goal and let them know how much time was left. So it's just a matter of them controlling the possession from here on. 20 seconds, maybe a chance if they can get it to the midfield for a last flurry. McGrath, short ball, very protective of it, the Blues. It's intelligent professional play. Scotland at halfback, now able to go, knowing they're out of the danger zone. The kick. Looking for Digby Morrell. Did well. Graham to Moore, but that'll be it. What a quarter for the Blues. What a quarter of football. Seven straight goals. Longmuir got two. Fisher got two. Waite got two. And that man, Kuda, stepped to the line with the last goal. It was a fantastic opening for the Blues side in this first quarter. Richardson knocked out. We'll find out about him during the break. But at quarter time, it is Carlton 7 straight 42. The Tigers 3 5 23. I think he may well come back on and play. If the tests are right, they do a written test, Gary. And if the test says he's okay to come back on, then he can do so. They take it very seriously, Brian. They do. But they also take it seriously in the fact that if he test proved that he's good enough to come on then he's test. allowed to well that's what they you, do they do a written test Gary you used to do the test and deliberately go slow at it so if he did get knocked out then your results would look the same it's just a written test Gary that they do and they can beat the mark they got at the start of the year they're back that's out exactly there exactly right <laughs> that's my point well we'll see out of the middle Fisher Graham and Simmons combining Simmons looking for some running support from behind, found nothing. Campbell, we've got a stack of it in the first quarter with his nine disposals for half a quarter. Has been pinged this time. Been very happy with um, Andrew Carazzo's year, at Carlton. He's been one of their most consistent players. Gets it further afield to Scotland. He goes low and hard. Mark taken very comfortably by Hilton. At the back, not a great kick. Looking for Deledio, missed him. Hardigan was good. Good, hard, penetrating running. And Pettifer has taken a good mark out in front of Teague. That's what he's got to do, Kane Pettifer. Get up and present to the football. Hardigan's run on well. Ball's going to carry him and get to the boots of Tambling. And this young man... Taken very high in the draft and uh, lots of expectations. Number four. Obviously a super talented package. And they don't mind these days, Gary, putting some extra pressure on themselves. The young blokes with the red boots, the white boots, the <laughs> fluoro boots. Standard these days, Jim. They just love it. Let's have a look at him from the set shot. Kick on the way. Got it going nicely, but it's away to the left. And that's a behind. Yeah, he's had a couple of injuries in his first year, but I would have thought they'd be pretty happy with uh, his start to AFL footy. Richard Tambling. Livingston told to play on by the umpire. Not sure why, but it put the Blues under enormous pressure. Whitnell. Penifer. Cracker. Open goal. Opportunity oh. missed. Boy, they've missed their last, I think, four opportunity this 
the Tigers. Yeah, they have. Um, the one positive is that they're now getting that into a position where they can score. Ten scoring shots to seven. Still trail, obviously, but it's turned around a bit for the Tigers. Whitnell missing the attempt there. Cracker again locks it in. And if you kick it to the top of the square, you never know what will happen, and this man has grabbed it. Well, that's the reason, I guess, why Carlton are just languishing at the end of the table. The ball had to go out of bounds over here. They, they had to get that out. You can't have a player get on his knees and end up giving a handball off that sets up a goal like that. Stafford in his 12th game for the year. Ten goals for the year. He's nailed that one. That'll help the Tigers get back on track. Well, Greg Stafford is one of those players who's got enormous ability, enormous talent. He's had interruptions through injury, but also suspension. And I think Terry Wallace was quite right to put him under a little bit of pressure over the past few weeks. So it's time really to show us that he can be a big part of this team that's going or heading in the right direction. And he's made a pretty reasonable sort of a start today. The Tigers get the first of the second term. Their last 15 minutes of footy's been good after the Blues burst out to a big lead. They've had more scoring shots and are starting to control the game even though they still trail. Simmons got it down. The Blues with the clearance, however. Wait with a fly. First field, a good fist away. Hardigan, direct football, good kick. Got Pettifer. This man could play full forward. He could take David Teague to full forward and create some sort of problems for Carlton. Stafford on long if he wants to sit it up for him. Goes there now, but the ball's not going to get to him. Whitnell, red at best, and took in the end an uncontested mark. Gave it to Camparelli. And now Teague at half back. Over the top, one on three. Tigers way. And Delidio sees it over the line. Unfair, Brian, ever to compare someone to their father. Jim Cracker, one of the all-time greats from North Melbourne, but that's what Jimmy did supremely well, wasn't it? On the run inside 50, you just put your glasses down. Andy Cracker, you've seen a lot of him. Has he got the same ability on the run for the goal, Brian? Oh, I think he's got the potential ability to be like his father, but he's got a long way to go. And he's doing some very good things at Tigerland this year, and... A big improvement on where he's been at, no question. And in the last four or five weeks, as I mentioned earlier, he's been exciting. Well, Kick good. deep, more. All he could do was punch away from Whitnell. Johnson waiting for the ground level ball. Took on Fisher. Got rid of it, did well, kept it alive, but. Three kick, Johnson. Okay, after he got rid of the ball, Gary, was it? Yep. Last two times they've gone forward, Greg Stafford has been 10 metres behind Whitnell now. He's got to be able to judge the depth of his teammates' kicking ability and Gee. make sure he's not caught behind. Just put this one up high and give Stafford a 10 or 15 metre runner-up. He wants it back in the corridor, and that's exactly where he pointed. Now he's got to go. Worked over the top. Punch down was good. Coughlin under the pump from Teague from behind. Bentick in front. And eventually... The players form a scrum around the ball and we'll toss it up. Well, let's split the blame there, Brian, on both uh, the kicker and Stafford's behalf because uh, that kick needed more height. Yep. But Stafford's setting himself too deep. He's setting himself up for a 55-metre kick. He's got to understand that it's not going to carry that far and get him... Lance is smart. He's playing 10 metres in front of him. Bounce of the footy. McGrath tackled hard and the ball locked in again. Lots of the play now in the Tigers' forward half. They're down to 13. Richo knocked out in the first term and unlikely to come back, certainly, in this first half. He's down in the Richmond rooms being assessed. This is surging play from the Tigers. Tuck around the body. Whitnell tries to take the mark. More off the ground, kicks again. Good thinking by Kelvin Moore, a name that's not normally associated with goals, of course, the great Hawthorne fullback, the 70s and 80s, but this Kelvin Moore has just opened his account. First goal in his AFL career, which spans all of 11 games. 
Mind the money. First, First goal, goal of this year, year Gary. Can't read your stat sheet. Yeah. Mind, I'm sorry. First goal of the year. His fifth goal of his career. Why is Teague on the phone, Gary? Being led to the footy a bit lately by Kane Pettifer. That's his uh, concern. Pettifer's got a new opponent. Callum Chambers. Tigers have kicked three of the last four goals in this game. The only two goals in this second quarter. And all of a sudden, they're within five points. And mounting a bit of a challenge. Graham off the back of the square was good. Delidio looking for the run of Tambling. Now three Tigers onto one. Bentick beat them all. Simpson to Kudafidis. The stand and deliver kick was good. Look Found it. his man. Look at them go forward now. Stevens yeah. will get on the end of this. Fisher knew he had multiple options. And now Stevens will line up about 48 metres out. That was quite amazing, Brian. There were four or five Carlton players all leading to this footy with their hands in the air. It looked like a bunch of clotheslines running into their forward 50. Nick Stevens for his first goal today. Fair way out. Kick is lovely. He does it well. Blues have got their first of the second quarter. Well, one on one contest so important that you win them, and actually, the Carlton player that won the contest to, to win the ball back to Kuda Fertis. Look at these blokes, look at them. He had his choice. End up giving it to Nick Stevens, which was a great choice, and he kicked it beautifully. But there was a one on two or one on three back here. Bentick was the player that won it, and he set it up, and that's a great sign for a young man still making his way in AFL footy. The Blues with an answering goal after Richmond kicked the first two of the second term. Stevens by foot. Excellent. Bouncing's been terrific. Clearance almost with the Tigers. Oh, no. And the player ran over the top of it in Tambling, allowing Fisher access to the footy. He's only a young man, Richard Tambling, but he needs to be told. I'm sure Terry Wallace was. That wasn't good enough. He didn't go hard at the footy. Johnson. Has a bounce, has a couple of bounces. Trying to steer it forward. Kick too strong for Cracker. Chambers at the back. Whitnell this is. Over the top of Camparelli. Lots of time though for Scott Camparelli. And his kick forward good to Fisher. Now Fisher will look to get this back in the corridor. He does. Finds his man here. So they can go forward again. The Blues. Carrazzo. Kick is nice. Wait on the charge. Too far out to score. Simpson's out of the loop early. He can short, he can go there if he wants. Had a lot of time to do it. And Kane Johnson turns to Graham. I think it may have been and said, what is going on here as Tambling has a spell? And, the and reason, Simpson will line up. The reason he's having a spell and the reason why Carlton's having a shot, he took his eyes off the footy, didn't put his body over the ball and didn't welcome the body contact. Now that's harsh and he'll get better for a young kid. But he, he, that's what... That's why he's not on the ground. Simpson to make it two in a row for the Blues. From 40 metres, this one's just off to the left. And a minor. I reckon uh, he'd, he's probably been spoken to already, Richard Tamling. I reckon you get him back on at the next opportunity. Give him an opportunity to redeem himself. Newman tried to kick it to himself and take off, but the umpire hadn't finished waving the flag, so he'll do it again. Now he's called to go. Steers it in the first field direction. Carries him. Wait, picks it up and goes to Scotland. Having trouble getting it out of their defensive 50 at the moment, the Tigers. But they are. I reckon they're missing Joel Bowden's rebound. He's just had the uh, three possessions for the game. You know he's a prolific ball winner. He's up against Brendan Favola, who's also only had one touch. And... I just think he's such a creative type. He's the best, he's probably their best corridor user, Joel Bowden. A bloke that can get it back into the middle of the ground or even himself be on the receiving end through the middle. And uh, I reckon that's one of the reasons they've been bogged down a bit. Hasn't been a prolific goal kicker in his career. Heat Scotland, 30 from 90 games. That's what's ahead of him. He's going to be tight. It's going to sneak through. Good result for Carlton. Well, that's a great result. Nine goals. Still 11 and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. 
they just look far more dangerous up in their forward half. Their pressure all over the ground's been good. And they've just got a lot of options. A lot of blokes that are presenting. They know that they're a fair chance to win the footy back. And they've been able to convert this with uh, great accuracy. Nine goals won. The Blues with consecutive goals. 12 minutes into this second quarter. Just regaining their composure. After a little slump at the start of this quarter where the Tigers kicked two straight. And Coughlin on the bottom of that one. Umpires haven't even sighted them in this game. They've been very good indeed. Quigley, Ellis and Nichols. Campbell. Just it backwards. Found his man there and tuck. High ball. Here they come. More! Strong Jukies mark. The Jukes. Extended. Mm. And more from beyond 50. Well, mate, he might be the unlikely goal kicker now to replace Matthew Richardson. Got some talent. Graham coming for another spell. Chris Jones reported he was the most bench player in the first quarter. As Moore comes in, kick on the way is off to the right-hand side just. It was really stretching his capacity in terms of distance. Camparelli, different roles for a few of their senior players. Jim Camparelli in the back pocket, essentially. Whitnell down there at full back. He's been a great servant of the Carlton Football Club. Camparelli, so has this man. A couple of premiership players. Anthony Kudafidis to Carrazzo was nice. Down the Doug Hawkins wing, broken up by Tuck, did really well. To Tivendale. High ball just coughed up. Kuda waiting back there. Took the mark very comfortably. He can load up again from back here. The Blues. Half forward. Morell with a climb from the side. Unable to take it. The ball beat weight. First field's been okay. Hardigan's been okay. And they can run now. Hyde long ball forward. Simmons at the back in best position. Got the footy on the deck. Spins around. It's a goal to Simmons and a goal to Stafford in the role that was earmarked for Matthew Richardson. We should have marked that. Maybe the Sun. Perhaps we could give him a little bit of benefit of the doubt the Sun right now. But uh, both, obviously, Stafford and Simmons have got a fair height advantage on Lance Whitnell. So if the ball's used properly and kick long and deep, then that still presents itself as a problem for the Blues. Tigers back within 11 points at the 15-minute mark of the second quarter. Nine and a half to remain in this first half of football. Interesting game here at the Dome today on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Went early, did Noble. Got none of the ball. Out of the middle. Got a lot of youngsters in here at the moment. Stevens. And there's one of them, Carrazzo. Working through a bit of traffic. Just sets it up nicely. Watkins for ball. will give him a bit of confidence, much needed confidence. Well, he's, he could be the icing on the cake, Brian. Nine goals they've got already, and he has not contributed one. So if all of a sudden he, he can start to find a bit of footy, Brendan, in fact, coming for his first kick, in actual fact, for the whole game, then they are right in this, the Blues, for some sort of an upset. Well, this one's a pretty straight kick for Vol. He's only 35 metres out. You saw his accuracy rate there this year, 65%. And for his first goal of the game, in he comes. Without the shag, Brennan Favola. Very deliberate. He's, this part of his game is normally very, very good. Picture of concentration is Fev as he comes in and slots that one home. Well, if he put in the footy in there as often as the Blues are, then you'd reckon it's only a matter of time. The good thing for Carlton is in maybe really 
games or recent times, if Brennan Favola didn't have a goal well into the second quarter, the chances are the Blues would be getting spanked. But that's Brennan's first, but it also happens to be Carlton's tenth. And that's the big difference today. The big boy in the forward half for the Blues, Big Fev. A contested mark and goal, which we love to see from the tall forwards, Delidio. Just missed the body with the handball, although he was under severe pressure, but Stevens comes away. He can kick a goal from here. Outside the 50, it's going a long way. It's going all the way. They haven't had much to yell about this Carlton faithful, but the I tell you, the members that have come along and supporters that have come along today have found some voice. And the, the Blues are giving them a good run for their money. Just the 50-50s here in the middle of the ground. Whichever team wins it, look at them. They're all running hard forward. So critical. What a beautiful finish from Nick Stevens. Biggest margin of the game to date. Four of the last five goals, the Blues. 23 points. We've played 19 minutes, second quarter. There's the time remaining. And they are on a roll here at the moment, the Blues. Morell coming to the bench and replacing him, Bet. So some excitement coming down to the forward line as well. Here's Chambers. This centre clearance, pretty important, I would have thought, for both. Campbell gets the job done, though. Johnson to Tivendale. Low ball, Simmons on the lead. Beautiful. And he's within range. He's a long kick of the ball. He's got Noble in the square. And he'll go back and set himself for this one. And he is still looking for any offerings. Nothing he likes, so now he will settle into his routine. Good. The umpire has asked him to play on. Kick to Tamling on the lead. Tamling is marked. Well, if the guys have any set shot. Not sure they can do that, Gary, no, can they? I don't, that's a grey area in our game. He can't make the judgment that, that uh, Troy Simmons is not having a shot. Exactly. And this will be good for Richard Tamling's confidence if he can go back and slot it. A uh, little seat on the pine, back into the fray. McLaren yesterday, umpire McLaren told Luke Paul he wouldn't make the distance, so get on with it, he said. Tamling made a bit of a mess of that one off the side of the boot, but he'd be happy with getting hold of it. As Camparelli out of defence, as Gary has said a couple of times, playing deep in that Blues defence today. What is the reason for Whitnell and Camparelli both playing deep in defence, Gary? Is to give it the young Blues a chance to get a bit of ball of their own? I think playing them in their well, their normal positions, if you like, hasn't worked, so they might as well. But uh, Whitnell's been at halfback for a long time. He's just been dragged deeper because of his opponent. But Camparelli looks to be uh, in the next phase of his career. Cracker. And Hyde and also Bentick, who's been good, and the ball's over the line. He might, well, he might like it, but he's going to have to um, have to wear it. Scott Camparelli, and uh, if his footy is to continue, that might be the position that Dennis Pagan's got earmarked for him. Campbell, clean possession. Chain of handballs, ends up with Pettifer. High ball forward, good luck marking that. Simple fist away for... Whitnell and Livingston. Yeah. Reckon he went for the goal then, Kane Pettitrup, and the centre would have been the goal, I reckon. Yeah, the little things, Brian, aren't they, that uh, will finally cap off Pettitrup's career if he can get them right every time. Top of the square, it had to be. Decision-making. Here we are, Tuck. Said, I'll have this one. Had a quick shot, had to get rid of it quickly. He took it out of the ruck. And we'll have another boundary throw in deep in the Tiger 50. It's 11 goals, one today for Carlton, 67. Richmond, 6 8 44. Outstanding accuracy for the Blues, 11 1. Seven straight in the first quarter they set it up with. And just the one blemish here in the second. Brennan Favola's job today is as much about taking Bowden away from the footy as it is about kicking goals. Now there's the ball in the pocket. There's Favola out on the outer wing, on the other side of the ground. Bowden playing inside him a bit to try and get in the play. Work to the back, Stevens' hands were good. Whitnell just thumps it onto the boot. First field stands his ground, long muir at the back, went to ground, allowed Tivendale to pick it up. The Tigers' hands very good, Delidio. Underground handball, works to Tivendale, looks for more. Kick out in front of the young man, takes a good mark and gets some treatment. 
from Livingston after it. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. He, uh, he's got some, some genuine speed. 50. 50. <laughs> there was something wrong with it then. Yeah, well, it was just untidy. It wasn't malicious. He didn't have to do it, so I guess the 50 is reasonable. Just, just a bit late, wasn't it? A bit late. Not a smart move when you've got a bloke tucked up on the boundary line. It's made an absolute certainty of it now. Moore's going to kick his second of this second term. And the Tigers need this one just to hang on. Point blank range. And that's a goal. Well, it's very badly needed. Luke Livingston is uh, just a bit of a pickle on that occasion, and that's why he's coming to the interchange bench. Diggers is coming on to sort him out, but uh, this is a mark. Didn't need to do this. Just didn't need to do it. I mean, he was 50-50, probably less than 50-50 to kick the goal from out there. Down Kelvin Moore. But uh, that silly little action made it a certainty, and that's what Dennis is telling him. Livingston getting some instructions on the phone from Dennis Pagan regarding that unnecessary 50. There is the man speaking to him. And listening intently. Luke Livingston, I'm sure he'll be back on the ground in a moment. It's cost the Blues a goal. Moore's got a couple. And the Tigers are within 17 points. They were down 19 at quarter time. Still plenty of time left in the quarter. Six minutes. The Blues out of the middle. Brilliant play. Stevens. Kuda Fadis from a long. Some emotion for the Carlton supporters who have been doing it tough all year. They've been um, quite exceptional out of the middle. Some of their breaks, what I guess the Richmond setup now is going to look at is that they've got a sweeper back. Just a couple of times now they've waltzed away from the centre circle with no real defence from Richmond. It's almost all or nothing. And I'm not sure you can really afford to gamble like that. What a sight for Blues fans watching their hero Kuda on the run from outside 50. Slotted. Bring a tear to the eye, Gary. <laughs> There's Chambers. High ball forward. Can they get another one? Fisher's hands. Fantastic. Well, again, once again, um, Jim, out of the middle. The clearance out of the middle makes the world a difference. And this boy has got some talent. Don't worry about that. That is an absolute first-rate contested mark. Kick. Sorry, mate. Go on. No, no. It's just had the two goals in the first opening quarter. Got this for a second in a minute. And every time Richmond challenged the Blues, they find something. From the set shot, the kick looks to be working left. And a disappointing result for Fisher and Carlton. Well, they're pretty level out of the out of the centre. This does appear that Carlton have had more penetration or had the, the clearer breaks, certainly in recent times. 24-point advantage for the Blues as the Tigers huddle and break for the Newman kick-in. Ball went early. That might have hit Brian in the head. Noble with the smother in there. Betts kept it alive. Bentick. Like him. Bangs it back inside 50. Here they go. They set the punch over the top. Hilton was good. First field great. Now Newman. Ground level. Simpson might have got ridden in the ground. Umpire said no. Eventually the ball spills loose. Good umpiring to let it go. Hilton's in there working hard. Bentick. He's really put his head over the ball. And had a couple of successes in this game so far. He'll ball this one up though. At centre half forward for the Blues. There's a big man who just has played more minutes than any other player in the competition. Tambling. A couple of blues, though, waiting back. Gee, that's, that's disappointing. They've got no balance. All right, so one of them goes looking for Favola. Cooter across the front. Free kick, I think, is going against the Fev. Well, he was trying to do the right thing, I think, and protect Anthony Kutafidis, who was coming back with a fly to the footy. So... I reckon you'd cop that one if you're Dennis. Just realise that he's in a bit of trouble, so... Oh, there wasn't oh. too much in it at all. Gee, that's soft. Soft, isn't it? Low from... Bowden. 
nice to Tivendale. Going in the noble direction. Almost a very good mark. Bentick slammed hard into the turf and the umpire asks for the Sharon. Puda, seven disposals this term, standing up for his club. Trying to get their first win in a long time. Cracker taken high will take a free. Got both Stafford and Simmons forward now. Gets it to Wayne Campbell, the former captain. Had Simmons on, ignored him. Just sits it up high now for Big Stafford. And that's where he does his best work. When the ball's on the head of his direct opponent. Well, that's the quick footy brain of Wayne Campbell. He was going to kick it to Troy Simmons, but it was too dangerous. He had to check his kick and sat it up. He almost, when he kicked it, Greg Stafford had his back to Wayne Campbell. So he virtually kicked it up onto his head and Stafford turned around. The footy was there. Noble coming off of the uh, blood rule. So that's one of their tools, Mark Graham. Should be the player to come back. A bit of claret flying there, Gareth. <laughs> well, it is. Uh, Brett Delidio, it is, that comes on. There is a bit there. They'll staple him up and he'll be right to come back out. So this is a big kick for the Tigers. A trail by four goals. Half time coming at us. Greg Stafford. That's a good kick. And the Tigers get a much needed goal. It still looms as a bit of an advantage, doesn't it? The full forward position for Richmond, even given that Matthew Richardson's off the ground, having been concussed early in the piece. Stafford and between Stafford and Simmons, have got three goals, and Kelvin Moore, who's also playing out of the square, has got two. So they've, they've got five goals virtually from that goal square position. So long, strong to the goal square, still a very, very viable option. Well, they've got Richo out of action and giving some attention to the head there. One of the other big men, Noble. Maybe you got a nick on the head. Just a little clip of the elbow to the head, accidental by weight. We'll see some work being done there by the doctors just to stop the flow of claret. But the Tigers get one back. Stafford's got a couple. We've got two minutes remaining in the half, and Simmons went very early. Allowed Stevens and the midfielder, the Blues, to take it away. Weight. Combines with Stevens, a centering ball. Fisher over the top first field was better. Bentick. Free kick, Bentick. Getting held. He plays on wide, finds Carrazzo. Just snuck inside the 50. Didn't have a lot of time to think about it. Got it to the line off hands. Minor score with a minute 35 on the clock. Really good effort by the Blues. They've really held on here. And they still look likely to score most times they go forward, and it's so important. Joel Bowden gives it to Cracker and then gets it back from him. Good kick. Has always been very good with the left boot. Joel Bowden got it to Hyde. Further afield to Hall. Not great inside the forward 50 as far as the ball spinning is concerned, but it got to a dangerous spot. Controlled nicely, though, by the Blues defence. It's an example of Joel Bowden's uh, you know, ability to get the footy going, though. That's what they're missing a bit, the Tigers. Camparelli to Lappin, who's been quiet. Can have a couple of bounces down the outer side. Has three of them, in fact. There's his fourth. Thumping handball. Works to Prendergast. He'll get it back now, Lappin. And the left foot kick to Scotland. Closed down by Newman. Can the Tigers reload? They can't because Teague's parked under it. Now, he can find the open man. Getting forward, Chambers. 60 out, centering ball. It was a good save initially by Hilton. Comes back to Chambers. High ball, Betts is the only one there. He marks. Uncontested in the forward pocket. Now watch for him to play on. The umpire hasn't blown time off yet. Well, they should have a message out there saying that there's 13 seconds to go. If he wants to be able to run on and play on, he needs to do it inside eight seconds. Clock is counting down. He's going the right foot banana. He's set up for that. In he comes. 
What an important one right on the siren, minor score. Caught it on the near side, did Eddie. And that is Eddie Betts. But a good quarter of football. The Blues nailing five goals. And the Tigers likewise. And there you see the margin at half time. It was 19 points at quarter time and is now 20 points at the major break. Yeah, we've got a game in our hands. The Tigers' season's on the line. The supporters can't believe it. They're down by 20 points to the side sitting on the bottom of the table. They've got some work to do. They've got Matthew Richardson off the ground. September might just be slipping away here at the Telstra Dome. It's the Blues by 20 points at half time. Big half a footy, especially for the Tigers. A season defining hour at the office. They've got the clearance. That's thumping out towards the wing. McGrath leads in the race. Went to ground, crucially went to ground. Pettifer picked it up. Long ball forward. Whitnell in best position. Big oh. Barnaby going back. Oh. They spoiled each other. I think a free kick's been picked out. And Lance Whitnell will end up with it. A couple of moves, significantly Bowden now onto the wing. He's been with Favola for the whole first half. They've lacked his drive, so he's up on the wing. Ray Hall gone on to Favola. Going to try and win the game, the Tigers. Whitnell looking for Kuda and found him. The Blues controlling the opening moments of the third, as they have done for most of the game. 20 points up, Morrell started on the pine. Centering kick, Whitnell crept down again. No one went with him. Delivery of the ball important for Bowler on the lead. And within his range, even though he's kicking from beyond the 50 line, he is a thumping kick of the ball. And that's the worry, I guess, to take away a man that's been able to keep him to a goal in the first half. But look, the reality is for the Tigers, they've just got to win the game. So uh, this is the absolute right move. Brendan Favola might end up kicking six in the second half. Who knows? Ray Hall's got the job on him. Beautiful ball use by Lance Whitnell. Good strong mark from Digby Morrell. The Blues are looking good. Favola for goal number two. And this would just give the Blues the surety that they need, that what they're doing is right. As Stafford comes to the bench for a spell and cracker on. Favola, big kick in this game. Look at the picture of concentration from Fev. Nothing but looking at the tall sticks. Kick on the way is marvellous. Favola's got a couple. Fantastic start to the Blues. Beautiful conversion from Favola. This is a worrying time for the Tigers. Who is going to put their hand up here? And now... They need a quick response because one more goal out to 32 points. That is a hell of a long way back for a team that have not really clicked this afternoon. Brendan, two goals. Maybe more to come. Brendan Favola with the first of the second half. Ah, oh, the Blues staring at a boil over. Cuda got it out of there to Scotland. This is good stuff to Stevens. Outside the 50, set side. Oh, He's got it. Don't tell me on the left foot from the centre clearance again. The centre clearances might be pretty well even, but I tell you what, Carlton have been much cleaner. That is some nice ball use. What about the thing about Nick Stevens is when he goes. He goes without any doubt whatsoever. He will just run hard forward. That's why sometimes the Tigers might have to think about someone off the back of the square or even a sweeper at the centre circle because they've been opened up. Boy, Nick Stevens gets it done on the right. He gets it done on the left. He has put the Blues out to a game-high margin of 32 points early in the second half. Bowden, as Gary has mentioned, has gone into the action zone leaving his opponent for Vola at the other end. Ooh, looks like the skipper Kane Johnson might have swung himself round. Oh no, as Coughlin goes back to Stevens. Thought that Johnson might have moved on to Stevens, but 224s there, you see, head-to-head -head all afternoon. Stevens have his nose in front, you'd reckon. 
umpire, I think, just losing his whistle. And that would be disastrous, given mm. the fact he is an umpire. Tends to rely on blowing it occasionally. Johnson got rid of it legally just in time, but the umpire said he threw it initially, and I think that's a pretty fair call. Incorrect disposal. Cooter leading from the front. At the back door to Stevens. Look at the low ball forward for Viola on the lead. Hall's got him wrapped up this time. Dispossessing tackle, spills out the back door. Coglin managed to just move it. Tuck gets the arms loose to get the handball Ooh. out. Johnson back into the zone here for the Blues. Got to do it all. Hardigan just attacked the ball and did really well. And the boundary line will do the Tigers just to regain their composure for the moment. Got to sniff the Blues. They are playing like a side who can sniff a rare victory. Being good little Hardigan. We're in the back half for the Tigers. There's a key matchup. Have a look at that. Stevens and Coglin. A couple of Stevens goals on the run have been blistering. Got it all to do now. The Tigers. Taken high. Carrazzo has won himself a free. Things just going the Blues way, Gary. Uh, they look a bit rattled, the Tigers. Cuda. Got it to Barnaby French. The handball off, Lappin spins out. Scotland around first field and over the top. It's a little too easy to Simpson. Takes it back to Fisher's going to be claimed by Campbell. Went with the bump, worked in the end. Tambling can get it out of there into the centre. Pettifer will bounce up and go long. Simmons and Stafford. It bounces off the chest of Stafford. That's and the Blues are away. Lappin. Two on one. Couldn't work it out, the Tigers. A bounce. Edge of the corridor for Vola. Oh, the beautifully timed the punch. Brian. Look at the Tigers around the ball here. Tuck. Dukes. Just hoists it out of the area. Got it to Bowden. Quick hands Newman. Back to Bowden. Now set up on the left boot. Little chipping kick. Drawing. Crack into the ball. Good There's ball. the extension of the Dukes there. <laughs> and the advantage is obvious. Cracker to come back and kick over the mark. Oh, umpire. Oh, he did. Umpire. He kicked over the mark if he's kicking to that angle, umpire. That's pedantic. pedantic. Umpire Kieran Nichols. That's the word, Big Brian. That was the word on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> Krakua. Here he is, short ball. Stafford intelligently taking a step back before the ball arrived to gain another metre. I'm not sure it's enough for the big man. No, I don't think he's going to go the journey. He is a good kick of the ball in terms of finding the leading player. And if someone presents, he will nail them. Stafford's kicked a couple today. And this just ultra important for the Tigers. Here he goes. Looks for the lead out wide. Now got room here. Up over the top. Mm. Pettifer attempted mark, but Dickey was there solidly. Shocking choice by Greg Stafford. Wait. Back to a central location in Livingston. Whitnell's been the quarterback today in the back half, just steering the footy into the path of his teammates. That time the boundary line was a little too close for Simpson. And the ball will be thrown in. Lappin uh, has got the job of running with Bowden, it would appear. Um, Dennis has been doing some talking on the phone today. Great pick up from Scotland. Again, the hands were fantastic. Simpson out into the path of Carrazzo. He's corralled. Back to Simpson. He runs into all sorts of trouble but gets the handball away. Chambers inside the 50, looking for Brendan Favola. Eddie Betts tried to keep it in. Boundary umpire finally catches up. Now that Bowden's gone off Favola and Favola's kicked that early goal, really important for Carlton. They don't become too Favola conscious. They Tony, need to share that load. Tony Elshaw, while Dennis is on the phone barking instructions, might get a little backhand of Tony if he just... <laughs> they get too close to him, Brian. No, just, just especially when he's on the phone and talking mm. already. Can't have the two conversations at once. Graham... With a kick out of trouble. He should know that better than anyone, Brian, having sat next to Dennis for a good 10 years now. Has happened to him before, hasn't it? Copter clip. Yeah. 
the leading possession getters or marks in fact there have a look at the blues lining up mm, uh, you've got to find someone forward you see Teague's back on Pettifer. that's a chance for him to go forward perhaps but deep forward Stafford did well but in the rushed attempt to get it out of the zone found only McGrath now the transfer of play is risky but Whitnell's on the run can Simmons match him got a bad bounce Whitnell allowed Simmons to gain a couple Whitnell keeps going drag all around that's dropping the ball look at the Tigers run forward now three of them they escort the ball down to the ground Simmons should have kept going Bowden on the bounce the drawing handball could have gone to Delidio went himself now Joel Bowden, he just should have kicked the goal after he balked around the first Carlton player. I think that's what Camparelli was saying to him when he came up afterwards. <laughs> or something along those lines, Gary. <laughs> Ball to Chambers on the other side. And the Blues breathe again. You reckon the Blues fans at the lock at end didn't enjoy all of that? <laughs> just letting them know all about it. Lappin goes with the ball to Longmuir. Extended the hands, couldn't take the mark. Tigers defence rally through Tuck and Campbell. Look, if the Blues kick the next one, that's just about it, Gary. Well, it could be. You just wouldn't give up. I, mean, I know it's disrespectful because they're playing above their position on the ladder, but uh, maybe the Tigers are just playing too poorly. Chambers, left foot kick to Longmuir again. That's going to bounce for him. The left foot snap. He is selfish to Big Digby. Picks it up, slides to Fisher, who kicks a goal. Oh dear, what a turn of events. It looked like at one stage a, a near certain goal running forward with four or five numbers. Wayne Campbell makes a horrid, horrid mistake. And then in the goals, you get to that spot, we say it every week, you get it to the top of the square and anything can happen. And Fishick's kicked his third goal of the game. Bryzer thinks they're gone, the Tigers. The Blues are now 38 points in front and that little man there is worried about his Tigers. Is he ever? Can they get back? Simmons. Coughlin and Hyde combining. Hyde with a pumping ball, but only Whitnell there to gather. Plays too deep, Greg Stafford. Or he doesn't read what's going on up the ground well enough. This man's been good, Simpson. Wait back on the ground, as you saw. Got a bit of the James Freud rinse through the shag there, Simpson, but he's got that going nicely, and there is Wait. In board to the runner, McGrath. This looks good for Fisher. Got hands to it. Eddie Betts steps around, but he's going to have to bring it back, which is a good thing for the Blues because he'd missed the goal anyway. Oh, dear. And a 50. Must be a Richmond kick. It is. Let's just uh, work, put this in perspective, boys. If Fremantle win today against Collingwood, which uh, the chances are they may, Richmond can drop to 10th on the ladder. If they win, they go to 7th. So uh, this is the sort of stakes they're playing for. There's the free kick against Diggers. And all the boos are because the Fev won't relay the Sharon back to the man who needs the ball to get the movement on. Let's go to Chris Jones. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. The ball was thrown back and Fev walked straight past it. It was a fascinating situation and I think uh, it was Thirstfield who had to run down and get it. Well, Hyde has it now. Big flood, big flood going on now in Richmond's forward line. Hilton. They need the next goal. I mean, that's stating the obvious, but just got to stop the bleeding at the moment. The Tigers. Newman. Long, strong to big Greg Stafford, who's got to understand they're not going to kick at 85 metres. Has to be the play. Back to Hilton. There's the long, strong. Let's see what he can do down here, the big fella. Fist away. Teague. Just slung it out of there. Deledio. Savagely tackled and gone for holding the ball. Well, now they've got to work hard because Carlton are on the charge here. Got open ground in front of them, Gary. 
Carrazzo, but they just hold it up in the back line enough for the Tigers to regain their positions in defence. Camparelli at centre-half back, true. Now, Kuda's on here, ignores that initially. There's Camparelli, who spent the entire game in the back half. Short ball to McGrath. The Blues, methodical. McGrath handball, not what it should have been. Camparelli, long ball, Kuda! Catches it on 50. He's pushing forward on Shane Tuck at exactly the right time, and Tuck's had a bit of the footy, but kuda has been more dangerous. Here he goes, oh. launches from 50, long ball, accuracy not there, distance not there, Dickby flew behind. Look at Nick Stevens there, out. He was on his own, absolutely on his own. But this lead is looking better and better every minute for Carlton. They are just playing far more committed football at the moment. Newman needs to be clean here. They almost can't afford any more mistakes, the Tigers. Tuck edged out of it. Two on three. Johnson's got to get involved. Kick around the body. Coglin's got to get involved. Those two, Gary, got to start getting their hands on it. Yeah, they do, but not only get their hands on it, Jim, they've got to get their hands on it in the dangerous areas of the ground. No good getting them out on the back flank or the wing. They need some run through the middle, and they need some deep penetration, and they need stronger contests from their forwards. Picked up by Scotland. Handballed into the face of Teague. And advantage paid. Stevens goes to wait. Hands very good. He sees something he likes in the centre. That's not great. Although the commitment from Hardigan wasn't as good as it should have been. Now the Blues have a chance. Simpson, Hardigan goes back, well done. Well, he went back, trying to make amends, I think, Jim, because uh, the hands are out there, not sure the body were, was. And that's a little bit indicative of where they've been today, the Tigers. They've half been in the contest. They've got to fully and wholly commit. 39-point margin in favour of the Blues. Nine minutes left in the third. Cooter, yeah. Digby Morrell needs a clean gather. Didn't get it. Campbell in the back. Free kick, Digby. No advantage, so it'll come back, and Morell will have a shot on goal from a difficult angle, but only 15 metres out. Well, one of the things that happen when you get a little bit older and your legs go is you give free kicks away because uh, you perhaps haven't got the strength to stand up and stay in that contest without going to ground, and Wayne Campbell's given four free kicks away now. And this one might be the most costly of the lot. Carlton kick this. It is almost impossible, you think, for the Tigers. Never over, though, Gary. But Never over at all, bro. 45-point margin would be difficult. The voice of reason there, bro. Yeah, yeah, right right. Gary knows it's never, never over. Never right Carlton off or Richmond. Morrell comes in and makes it a 45-point margin with nine remaining in the third quarter. <laughs> Whoa, what can they do, the Tigers? What can they do? And there's a young man that you've highlighted early in the piece. It's ruined his weekend. There's Big Diggers, who's given him a little bit. He's had good form in the VFL with Coburg. He wasn't happy. He thought the weight was going to go on and take the advantage and kick the goal and deny him of a goal. But he's on the board. Terry Wallace, his team has not added to its half-time score. Well, the Blues have kicked four in a row. Gone pretty small on their forward line too, the Tigers. Stafford straight to Stevens. Scotland's been fantastic. Kick forward for Chambers. Extended the hands but couldn't mark the ball. Hardigan. Composure was nice to Pettifer. Further afield, we got Deledio. Over the top. Contested mark needed here. Livingston with a big fist. Well, they've got uh, the two Aboriginal boys in Cracker and Tambling playing in the goal square, Richmond. They've got Shane Tuck now virtually at centre-half forward. Kelvin Moore, small player. So they've gone very small in their forward half. Ball to be thrown in. Simmons. Not sure if he actually got the hand to it in the end. Better for... And Teague, the 215, see the footy over the line. Heath Scotland's had nine disposals this term. Of course you can. And that is running hot in any man's book. Oh, 
David Teague has had a reasonable game on Pettiford, but I still think that if they could isolate him in the goal square, it might be an opportunity. Work to the front. Campbell's hands were good. Delidio. Can he explode? Look at a couple of bounces. Look at the wheels. And the running shot from Delidio. Can it not? Just a little bit of class there, Jim Bob. Whoa. Beautiful work. And badly needed. Some run, some run and carry. That's the other thing the Tigers haven't had. When we've watched Richmond and they played well, they've had some real quick movers carry the footy. And he was almost the quickest in their, their side, you'd reckon. He's got the finishing ability. So two goals to Brett Delidio. And the uh, contest still alive. Bit of magic there from Brett Delidio. Sees the Tigers get their first goal of this second half, some 19 minutes in. Umpires bouncing today. Look at that. Immaculate. It's sensational, Brian. It has indeed. Nice firm surface here. Stevens out of the middle. Talk about good. Hilton. Too much at stake for Richmond, you'd think, Brian, for them just to roll over. They are going to keep coming. All right. Hyde, drawing handball, here's Hardy, and he's a good user. Little low ball, tambling on the lead. Just needed to hit him, he had his man beaten on the lead. And McGrath helped over the line by Cracker. So, just under eight minutes remaining in this third quarter. And Brian coming onto the ground for the Blues here, was a late replacement in the side today for... Here in Spawn. French knockdown. Pettifer bounced up. Left foot snap. Just missed by a fair way in the end. Out of bounds on the full, in fact. New straight away. Kane Pettifer. And that was no good. McGrath. On the new turf. Look at that. Gets it. To Bentick, who was very good in that second term. He goes low to Teague. Scotland, with his tenth stat for the term, gets around Cracker. Long ball forward. Fist away from Ryan was good. Tigers need to be clean here. It was Stevens who was clean. Kudafidis, lovely handball to Chambers. He's wrapped up. Tried to get it further afield to wait. Double teamed with the Tiger tackle. Was it hard again? Holding the ball. And that is a good result for Richmond. And they can bring it out the other side. Thirstfield finding Graham. Deep in defence, Tigers here. Simmons leads up and has presented the ball nicely. Now, Tucker in the middle, they ignore that. And Simmons may be forced to go to a contest here. He's got nothing on Brian, got no tall options really. And nothing down the line for the long one either. It's going to be one of the smalls that has to fly here. Pettifer wanted nothing of it in the contest and really should have made a better effort there, I thought. Favola, Teague combination. Through the middle, Teague, a long ball. Got the jump at it here. Brian's taken the mark. Well, he just came on to replace Fisher now. What it means is Thursfield, who's been OK back there, he now has to take on the much taller... Brian, so this bloke is a beautiful kick of the footy, and certainly in terms of distance. So this would hurt the Tigers. They've had the answers for most of the afternoon, no doubt about that. Chris Bryan. Just his eighth game of AFL football. 2004 draft. The big fella. A comfortable distance for him. And did it pretty easily. I think he may have just snuck it in. He has! Oh, what a big quarter of footy here for the Blues. Know that the challenge is going to come. Five goals they've got. Just held their nerve and not been relying on any of the names who have been carrying the club for a long time. That'd be the most pleasing thing. This young man from Frankston got another chance at AFL footy. Shows a bit. 
couple of the boys the Tigers are really missing Callaway and Gasper a tall defender and the clearance again goes the Blues way Morell to fly from the side Delidio is going to have to work hard here went without it Stevens just picked it up and popped it to the hot spot Mark dropped first field was okay Graham got the handball back to Hardigan and they come out in the Pettifer direction trying to see under the sun and that is an amazing situation gets it to big Ray Hall he's called to go Johnson over the top if he can get to him a bit of a don't argue from Ray and then the kick straight to Eddie Betts he dropped the mark sideways ball untidy but it'll end up with Bowden he slips it over the top and that was a well measured kick to Rory Hilton inches it forward and Pettifer has it around he goes from long range and a free kick's going to be given away it's going the Tigers way holding in the marking contest gee whiz that is a big call thought the free kick if any free kick was going to go the other way against um, the boy Calvin Moore no that wasn't a free Tambling walks in kicks the goal the free wasn't against Calvin Moore that's where I had my eyes I'd like to see it again on Richard Tambling there's a little hole there Gary little hole. you'll see it here but it was it was marginal but look Technically, it was there, I guess, but oh, gee, it was marginal. Just retarded in his attempt, wasn't he? Just yep. marginally. I mean, almost cancelled it out by Moore on, on Livingston, but might be a little bit of luck they need, the Tigers, because not much has gone right for them this afternoon. The former skipper and four-time best and fairest Jack Dyer medalist, Wayne Campbell having a spell. 39 points adrift, Terry Wallace... And his coaching staff. Delidio, Scotland. Spied he is. Carrazzo. Driving ball. Here they go for Vola over the top. Ray Hall with the big long. Jukes. Just extend them. Gets it out to Moore. They need to kick goals on end, Brian, the Tigers. They do. They can't kick a couple in a row and start putting some pressure back on the Blues. Delidio. Inboard to Johnson, the two-time Premiership Adelaide Crow. They've got to run the footy because they've gone small up forward. They've got to be able to run at the footy. The stop-start caper won't help Richmond. Hyde. He goes for the running option, gets around. This is Simmons, the only player who can mark this ball. Gets Brilliant. fisted away. Noble. Tambling. Can he kick another one? He has. Division out and put it on to Troy Simmons highlight reel. He won't think it's a big highlight. That's the pivotal play, the fact that he took the Carlton player on kick long, but this is not a mark. That's just a contest. And they've got Crummers there, and Richard Tambling has bounced back pretty well after a slowish first half. He's showing a bit of maturity here, and that's what the Tigers are going to do. Take the game on. A 33-point margin now as we move into the last three minutes of the third. Another one for the Tigers would make it gettable in the last quarter, you would think. Kuda just manhandles the ball out of the middle. Got it to the fast-moving Heath Scotland. Driving ball to Favola. One out. Couldn't get it. Some clever work by Hardigan. Sees the ball come out in the high direction. Two on one, first field. Great tackle by Simpson, trained to the ground. Simpson stares it to Scotland, who's got his own Sharon out there at the moment. Someone's got to put their mitt in the air for Heath Scotland. Footy's going to follow him into the showers, Gary. Stevens inside the yes. 50, the Digby Morrell. And this could take some wind out of the Tigers' sails. It's been all right, Digby, since he's come on. He's just worked hard across half forward, that forward 50. As I said, he's been in some pretty good goal-kicking form for 
Coburg is the uh, VFL sister club. That's not Richard putting on the boots there, is it, Brian? Don't think so. Wouldn't have thought so. Looks a bit sick, doesn't he? Nice kick of the goal. Uh, a kick at goal is Digby Morrell. And this, with just a minute and 40 odd seconds to go, would be very, very handy. Right in front. 45 out. The kick is dead straight. Oh, that one hurts the Tigers as they were just starting to mount something. But they've had answers all day long. Nine different goal scorers for the Blues. Six, seven of those have been multiple goal scorers. Get on the end of some of that stuff from Stevens, Brian. Just when you were the king of the goal scorer. Imagine leading up to some of that prune. <laughs> Digby Morell has kicked his second goal of the quarter. <laughs> and the Blues are 39 points up. A modest champion now, Brian. Oh. Bentick. Stevens. Carrazzo. Back we go to Whitnall. And now for the Blues march. Hamlin cannot go with this place. Scotland, who is with him? Driving ball from the point of the square. He's got it over the header. Lucky because it was sliding towards the goal line and a minute to go. Richard Tambing has gone in the middle to try and go with Heath Scotland. 14 possessions to Scotland. He has been unstoppable this quarter. 40 point margin for the Blues. Starting look beyond the Tigers. They had a mini run at him, but the Morell goal really hurt. First field or Hyde. Hyde takes a mark, gets around Simpson. Handballs. Too fierce for Newman. Big trouble. Favola. Wrapped up in the tackle. Fisher out of there. Waite and Morell. Boundary line looming. And that's the result. Dying seconds of what's been an awesome third term for Carlton. They've kicked six goals to three. As it ever. And uh, Dennis Pagan would be delighted with the form of some of his younger players. Stevens. And older. Favola, the smother, was good by the Tigers. Coughlin, ground level, looking to complete the extraction from that contest. Hyde, through heavy traffic, tambling. Got a hand on it, Bentick. Hardigan, under enormous pressure, Noble. Look at the Tigers. Every time they get it, there's a blue hand on them. Through the middle, now they've got some numbers. Kick. Not what it should have been, although Bowden fights hard to win possession. Now Whitnell tidies up, fires a cannon out to Simpson. Now Simpson, just a second go. They need a mark. Won't be paid. Will not be paid. Correct decision, umpire Martin Ellis. What a quarter of football we saw. Four straight from the Blues to extend their lead to 45 points. And then we said, saw three of the last five goals come from the Tigers. But it's not enough. And they trail by a whopping 40 points at three-quarter time. Richmond win. They would have gone to seventh today. If they, if they lose, they will go to tenth if Fremantle beat Collingwood. It is as simple as that. Stakes are high. We've got a quarter of footy. There have been some big comebacks this weekend already. Will we see another one? The Blues by 40 points at the Telstra Dome. Yes, it's it. Look, hey boys, let's get... This is a big quarter of footy here. Richmond need the first couple. We know what happens at the Telcher Dome last night. Brisbane and uh, fought back from 47 points to hit the front. It's a fast deck. Anything can happen. They need a big start to this final turn. Bounce of the ball. Off the line comes Coglin, claimed and slapped into the ground. Eventually, the umpire wants the footy. Now, the great question. Matthew Richardson knocked out in the first quarter. He was doing the warm-up during the three-quarter time break. Keen as mustard to get out there. Tigers have resisted thus far. When, if ever, Brian, is the appropriate moment to swing Richo into the action if they kick a couple of quick ones. 
What I do you do with a great man? I think man? the looks like the medical staff to me have already made the decision that they won't do it. Richo is trying to uh, persuade them otherwise, and I think it's not going to happen. Noble, a little Ooh. handball on the up. Just a word from the mentor might be enough. Well, no, he's, no. He's, he's this if, mentor stuff. Oh, if he had a mentor. Looking upwards at the box, Gary, <laughs> just to see what Brian reckons. Oh, a little smile over his face there. Mm -hmm. Carrazzo over the top. Hyde went to ground, tucks hands, okay. Delidio retreating but gets the left foot kick away to the back and Tambling's overrun it. Camparelli. And the ball over the line. Oh, gee, this would suit Carlton. They'd like a slowish start to this last quarter. Take any sniff out, maybe even score the first goal. Tigers have got to attack. Noble, Kuda, and Campbell. Carrazzo was high on him, but no free. Fair enough. Tambling fights hard at the bottom of the pack with those red boots. Can't miss him. Kuda didn't dispose of it, so umpire rules correctly a throw. Joel Bowden's down the square. Nick Stevens is with him, so that's a win for Richmond if they can keep that match up. Tuck. Kick is long and high. Now Simmons has got a jump and a free kick. No, it'll be coming back and they'll have to kick on the angle. Gee, it looked just, all right that set up too, didn't it? Yeah. When you're that far away from goal, Brian, it's just a pedantic rule, this one. I don't understand it. It is. Very much so. And now Tuck will kick to a pack forward line. Every player bar four in it. Long ball, Simmons tries to nudge with the ball. Good effort, effort Lance. McGrath, but it'll go straight back to Tuck. And the juggling attempt sees him successful. Short ball, just trying to lessen the angle as they go in. Newman with a lovely pass, finds Tambling on the lead, and Tambling goes low and hard, looking for Pettifer. Off hands, cracker, fast hands now. Pettifer lines up, 30 metres out. Here come the Tigers! Threw pretty hard, Kane Pettifer. Still makes the blue every now and then, but he's worked pretty hard, and I still reckon he's half a chance to... To kick a couple of, string a few goals together. And uh, they've just got to keep attacking, keep being prepared to run the footy, chuck it into the goal square. I think he needs to work harder in his games oh, generally, though, I Gary. I think he's getting better at it, Brian. He's not quite there, but he's getting better at it. You're a hard man, Brian. The plough on the phone. Seeing if he can just conjure something at the dome. Brian got a hand in there. Tuck's got it though. Out of the centre again, the Tigers. Tambling again just couldn't control the footy when he had a play at it. Camparelli brings it away. Steers it to Kuda, who's been great. He goes with the low one forward, and White's hands were really good. That was the way he used his body as well. It's a natural instinct, isn't it? It's a natural football skill and uh, well he's got the added advantage of now being in the system for four years or so watch Cruz this the little bit of the bottom use just getting the body onto first field there sounds yeah, like that came expert. from a man who oh, used oh. that part of his body regularly gary just a rump specialist he I was like to call him. yep come on no fun sunday <laughs> good size 38s he used to ask for from the property man as we see Wait with a big kick from the set shot. It doesn't look like it's great off the boot, but it's straight. Nice response by the Blues. They've got the answers, you would think, and they've had the most of the afternoon. Fantastic opening where they banged on seven straight. Cooter, influential player, strong leader. Has been very important right throughout the afternoon. It's down the other end there. It's a few of the young Richmond players. It's got to get a little bit harder. Wait gets his third goal of the game. And the Blues resilient here after the Tigers got the initial one. Bentic, Noble, Scotland, and Livingston. All combining Cuda. Ring a ring a Rosie in the middle as they finally get it out. The Blues. Wait! Oh, oh, oh. oh 
boy. He'll line up for goal number four. What about the players you mentioned in the middle of the ground, Brian? This is a magnificent mark. Young Thursfield just getting a little bit of jumper there, but you've got to allow that. Uh, Scotland and Kudafidis and Stevens in the middle. They have just been absolutely dominant over a highly rated Richmond outfit. Wait for goal number four. From 53 out, he gave it everything. Didn't get the journey. Noble with the punch down. Off hands. Shot of goals have got the distance by. Free kick to Fev. Free kick for Bola. Bola the jumper. Boy, oh, I missed it, Gary. You saw it. Well, I didn't see it, Brian. I just saw them walking back and the umpire there. Let's have a look. Tuck grabs Favola and he goes to ground, accentuates the contact. Umpire Rickles sees him and Fev, he needs a bit of luck. He needs a change of fortune. Just sneaking a look up at the board just to see if he's on, locked on, and all the cameras are there. And if he is on ready, he says. The shag is in place. And here we go. For goal number three, he's played a lot of his game as a sacrificial sort of thing, playing up the ground and wide. And here he is now to result in his third goal. Point blank range here for the Fev. Just on the lean side of the run. Noble has a word on the phone and he's got his third. And there's a smile on the face of Big Fev. There hasn't been too many of them in recent times, so that is good to see. Not sure there's a hell of a lot there, but sometimes you don't get the free kicks at R, so it all evens itself out in the end. And he's a beautiful converter. Big bag of goals not that far away for Brennan Favola if he just keeps at it and works at it, particularly now that he's got some support down there with Fisher and White and Longmuir. The Blues, with all the answers, are on their way to win number three for the season. Brian and Stafford. Sure, Scotland's yeah. just hunted the footy today. Kudafidis. Good mark, Digby Morrell, not paid. Slings it out to the side. This man's been good, Simpson. This man's been great, Kudafidis. That's not his best delivery forward. Oh, look at the fifth. Look at the work on him. Went with the one hand, but went without the ball, and Newman can walk away with it. Couple of bounces. Sideways delivery. Hide. Poor no one man. home. And McGrath can take a simple mark. Well, Simmons had laid out the other side of the ground, so once he leads, there's no long option in the goal square. Camparelli. Defender today with this man here, Whitnell. And Lance, happy to just hold it up. And we'll look for something down the line or even a centering ball to the corridor. He's a fit-looking unit, Brian. Fittest man in the world, Lance Whitnell. Chambers. Very, very good times he's been running. Gary is Bentick. Sends the ball to Morrell. Both players going over before the arrival of the ball. Fittest in the world. Morrell around the corner, looking for... Stevens on the lead there, and his handball was smothered by Bowden. Well, Stevens had a big influence on this game, boys. He has, uh, he and Kudafidis in Scotland have been just superb. There, oh, there they are, the big possession winners. Carazzo continues to impress. Stafford works it down. Graham picks it up and handballs inboard to Delidio. Oh. His kick partially smothered. Again, a dangerous ball here for the Tigers. Wait went without it. Johnson, the don't argue on Carrazzo. Now he's in all sorts. Scotland can kick a goal. Not a great finish for a man who's had a terrific afternoon. A little bit of pressure there on Heath Scotland, but he has his, his uh, combination with two or three other Carlton midfielders has uh, just been one of the main reasons. I pumped that ball forward, particularly out of the middle. 1901, 11 straight losses. That record dates back for the Blues, and they're going to end that here today. Newman in the back pocket. For the Tigers. Hilton had to stretch it half back under pressure from Favola. Fev really fighting it out to the finish. I think you can smell another one or two on the menu here. <laughs> 
And that would be handy for him in his confidence. Coughlin. And the skipper. Johnson. Hall. Lappin Corelli. But Hall able to send a long ball down in the Simmons direction. And he takes a wonderful mark in the end. Well, look, he, I just was watching Troy Simmons. He continues to want to lead. He continues to want to present to the footy. When this is the way he should be playing. He's got height on Lance Whitnell. Sure, he, he might be able on the odd occasion, but it, more often than not... But isn't that a trait of the modern-day footballer that they all want yeah, uh, dead right. uncontested ball and lead-up ball? You're dead right, Ryan, and it makes it hard. You've got a little cracker and tambling and Delidio and Pettifer who want to be at his feet. Well, it's hard to be at his feet when he's leading out to the wing. Front and centre players will be extinct yeah, soon, Gary. They shouldn't be, Brian. Simmons. 20 out. Comes in. He's got his second of the game. He's been OK, but he missed those two costly goals when the game was still very much up for grabs in that first quarter. There he is. There's the lead there. You saw it, number five, in the bottom of your screen. Now he's had to double back and work back to the goal square, which is a good effort. I mean, that's a nice way to play, but really, first option's got to be to pump it in long when you're behind by this margin. Two goals apiece in the final term. Not enough from the Tigers when they're down by so much. Stafford may have just got a backhander on it. Bentick's been very good. Handball forward to Simpson. This is looking good for the fifth. Couldn't take the mark. Fisher's been very nice. Stevens immaculate. It's a great reward for Nick Stevens. Looks like Dennis Pagan said, well done, son. You have worked us. Your work has put us in the position we're in. You can go and have a spell on the forward line, see if you can't jag a couple. And that is exactly what he is doing, Nick Stevens. He's now got three for the afternoon. And this will be a very sweet victory. Been few and far between. And he's been a star. The Tiger fans are getting up and starting to walk the aisles. 24,925 here today, and a few on the march home now. Round six was the last win that the Blues had over the Hawks this year. Kick forward. Graham, the former Hawk, tambling. Has got a bit of game time to, for him today, which is good. He needs lots of that between now and the end of the year. Handball a little loose, but Campbell, who was exceptional early in the game, and it really was a hot footy. Bowden's delivery there to Stafford. The the knock of the arm. No, he paid the knock of the arms, I think. Yeah, he did. You did right, Brian. Um, it's one to now with Joel Bowden, who struggled really to get into this contest after spending the first half at full back. Just makes it hard to pick up and just start to dominate. A little bit tough, would have thought it was a nice, genuine contest myself. Might have copped a bit of the bounce on the way through, Brian. Yeah. The arm and sort of elbow into the crown. Bit of everything in there, wasn't it? <laughs> Stafford for two today. Kick on the way, needs a bit of right to left, and he didn't have that. And that's a, a miss from the big fella. Gave them something early in the game. What you're taught in defender's school, Brian, if you're just a bit late with the spoil, make sure you cop a bit of bounce on the way through just to make the forward earn it a little. It's the way it appears to be. Mm. As the Tigers are going to have another forward 50 entry here. Pettifer from the standing start. And his kicks away to the right as well. Simmons takes the mark, and I think the umpire's allowed it. The goal umpire. Good play on and kick a goal. Look at the goal umpire. Good result for Simmons. Quite extraordinary, this. Wish our good friend Sam was here. Have a look at the... Uh, hopefully we'll get to see the goal up by on this occasion. It wasn't over the line. 
Certainly Brian thought so. Oh, oh, oh yes. yes. That's oh. why, Gary. Oh, dear. Dear me, Brian. Look at the goal umpire, though. Well, he couldn't have had a better view. How could he get it wrong? Gee, wins. Crikey. Jingos. Well, Simmons got his third goal, but a little controversial. We think it was probably over the behind line and unfair to focus the camera in, even though it's a lovely <laughs> shot of the man standing there. But if I was in control of that camera, I wouldn't have taken that shot, JB. Of course you wouldn't Because I don't think we should highlight things like that. Look at that basketball trick from Carrazzo around the back. Betts bowled over in the middle. Deledio with the hair getting more and more blonde as he progresses through the ranks, tambling. Trouble standing, here's Deledio. Just got it off to Newman. Tigers fighting this one out, good signs. And Cracker in, Cracker had a real crack. So did Hyde, so did Teague. Eventually the Blues went out. Story of the day right there, Brian. Saw players because of it. Camparelli striding towards the 15. Story of the day back at half uh, back for Carlton. No, they the, both sides had a crack, but Carlton persisted harder for longer, and that's why they won the footy, and that's why it ended up in the forward line, and that's why Brendan caught one in the in the ribs from Mark Rame, who's going to have to come off. I, I might think Andrew Cracker's certainly coming off. Geez, that was a committed challenge from Graham, wasn't it? Well, he's he's, he's certainly done that. Um, his short stint with Richmond. There's Andy Cracker copying one. Bit of a corky or a hip pointer, is it? Just a uh, stinger. Greg Hickey, a club doctor down there. As Favola lines up. He's got five on his mind. Fair the minute. And this is number four with nine minutes remaining. You can smell it. I've never seen a man so deliberate that isn't normally so deliberate. Twice as long as Lloydie. He is just doing this magnificently like every goal is crucial to his career. And the agony on the face of Fev as we go down boundary to Chris Jones. Well, you just mentioned Andrew Cracker coming off. It's just his lower back near his coccyx where he got the hit. A couple of tail enders for the Fev, you reckon, Brian? Mm. Absolutely. It's a good mark taken by Stafford, and then the dish off to Newman. Gonna have to bounce the ball soon, does now. Another bounce and runs himself in and out of trouble. Forward handball to Hyde, and he goes low and nicely to Hilton. Well, Rory Hilton has got one goal, kick one early in the piece. A little dribbler off the ground. Good run and carry from Newman. Some good support along the way. A couple of good shepherds, actually. And then supportive running there from Hyde, I think was the player that kicked it into Hilton. So Rory Hilton, an injury ravaged last 18 months. Back playing footy. And the set oh. shot, and that is, well, he's hit the ground before the ball. Almost oh a cold top. <laughs> and it's gone straight to Caporelli. That is extraordinary. Big Barnaby at the back. Picks it up. Shovels the handball. You've got to have another look at that. That is outrageous, Brian. Talk us through this. You're the man with the expertise. Oh, no. Maybe he just got a little casual on it and <laughs> just right. completely mistimed it. It's not funny. It it's is not funny. Jim. May have had the, long, <laughs> the longer boots on than normal today that caused the stub of the toe there. I'm telling you, that's real funny. I tell you what, there isn't a footballer out there, and there's not one sitting up here that hasn't done that no, at some stage. Uh, hello. And that includes you, Gary. Hello, Don't Brian. think you're out of the action there, because... I can't remember ever having that. Sure I you would have. be wrong, but... Be honest with yourself for once. No, I, I would own up to that. Hitting the ground behind the ball, Gary. I can understand James wouldn't have done it, because he... Well, to it's be frank, you just... Brian. ...haven't never touched the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. Reserves uh, grand final, Claremont. I guess, yes, it's exactly Western right, Australia. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Now, Campbell's going to take clean possession here. Down to Coglin. I'm not sure what the whistle was for. Throw. A throw. Jingos. So the Blues will end up with the ball on the wing, and this is a big celebration afternoon for them. They've beaten their old foe. Oh, 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 
not a time. That's just handball. That is just a practiced handball. They do that all the time. He's got the birdie bunt. Cause for Cuda to send. Over the top, looking for Longmuir. Tambling's there as well. But just a wonderful afternoon for fans of the Carlton Footy Club. That one, high contact. And uh, Bowden's allowed to wander away with the footy, but they don't like each other, these two clubs. They haven't had much to celebrate the Blues. This afternoon, they have played fantastic football. Down the line to Simmons, went with the one hand, and the ball over the line. Great. Wayne Campbell, uh, just a question on Wayne Campbell. I mean, his ability to find the footy is uh, unsurpassed. 20 touches today. But a couple of times he's gone to ground more often than you'd see him. And I guess that's a legacy of getting a bit older. And uh, what a superb career he's had. Still life in the legs. He thinks no more beyond this year. Averaged 18 possessions this year, Gary. Wayne Campbell has against 12 the previous year. So it's been an improving year for Wayne Campbell. Oh, no, he's been great, guy. He has as they continue to tumble and turn here. And he's probably had less game time this year than he had last year in accumulating that. Yeah, I reckon he's had a fantastic season just over the last week and, and probably more so today. He just a couple of times looked like it was a bit closer to the end than what we maybe have thought through the year. Gary. Over the back, Scotland. <laughs> what? Finished him off, Brian. I mean, fifth disposal, just obviously yeah, no, 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 something we don't. No, not at all. Just lay it on the plate if you'd like to, Delidio. For Gary's man, Wayne Campbell, <laughs> has tucked through the middle. More! Just presents beautifully and a Juki style finish to the grab. Juki. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Wayne just. This is it, is it for him? Or I mean, you may as well disclose what you know. Are you too stupid or something? Are you both stupid, or well, you seem to listen? intimate that? Well, he says he's not playing on beyond this year. He says it. Um, Terry Wallace wants him to. I just think today, having seen him play a bit, who's been superb today, he's looked like he might be on the money. He might be right, as opposed to Terry. Moore with two second quarter goals steps to the plate for the third. This one's heading left. And won't add to his two of today. Well, probably more accurate with my first question. You stupid, the two of you. I thought he's done enough today to think about going on, but far be it for me to disagree well, with you, Gary. This is a man that opened up in his first breath that Lapp and Camparelli and Whitlow are on the move. Camparelli is on the move with the footy, and he's slotted it into the hands of Kudafidis. He gets it back. McGrath. Across the face of the goal in which he's defending and he gets it to Teague. Stevens has had a wonderful afternoon. Into the centre, his ball use as always beautiful. Camparelli to McGrath. Sits it up for Whitnell. Out of contract player, he gets a push in the back. Big Lance. Thought about going. Now he does. A squaring ball. Simpson. In front of Deledio, took a good mark. Well, Big Lance has been pretty good today. And maybe Scott Camparelli might finish his next three years or so as one of those really attacking back pocket players. A guy called Alan Johnson from Melbourne finished that way. And there's Wayne Campbell just mm. enjoying a well-earned break. Oh. <sighs> That's an extraordinary ability to turn around, Gary, as uh, Simpson with the low ball forward has, in searching for the distance, pulled it away to the right, and that's a behind. 23 touches, Camp Rally, out of a back pocket. That is a pretty fair afternoon's work. But didn't think he deserved that break, Brian. Is that what you're telling me? Definitely. And uh, not happy with the result. That's all that worries Wayne Campbell no, exactly these days. Right. We'll have a look at Richmond's next four games. They could be in 10th position at the end of today's proceedings. As Hardigan back into the side today for the Tanks. Gives it to Hilton. He was probably in this side originally as a forward today, but has found himself play back. Tambling. Wide to Hyde. Tigers lining up here, but the Blues standing behind the line of Tigers. And this man here today has knocked up getting them in the slot. Well, the question needs to be asked of you, Gary. Whitnell, Camparelli, Lappin. Yep. Are they going to stay at Optus Oval or are they going to finish their careers elsewhere? Um, um, 
so many variables. Money becomes the biggest variable in all that, boys. I mean, do they want to stay at the money they're getting or they want more money? Ball kicked into Barnaby French. It's I'm confused off to if you're rolling. Well, if Lance wants 600, then he won't be staying. Wait has it. Simple as that, Brian. Big Ian Collins has said that. It's a centre half forward with the kick. to finish the day for him and the dish off to Johnson and now Bowden. Bowden on the left out wide on the wing trying to draw the player Bentick towards him now delivery to Simmons who elevates couldn't hold the cherry Teague Newman boundary line been a wonderful day today for the Blues their last win in round six versus the Hawks and Rory getting a bit of air time there just your big hanger, Brian. Beautiful, classic hanger, wasn't it? Boundary throw in French, deep. Tigers forward end. Quick kick out towards the Bowden direction. Sees him turn it over. And Scotland gets on the end of it. Down towards Cooter. Moore and Cooter scrap it out. Cuda wins out, left foot around the body. Noble got a piece of it now. Hall looking for support over the back. Johnson. Oh, boys. Crackers back on the ground. Recovered from that knock earlier. And now through the middle. Delinier goes the running barrel. Didn't quite nail it. Doesn't mind the barrel when given the opportunity, Brett Delidio. There's the Tigers' next four games. They've got Fremantle at two. Freo got their act together. The Dogs are hot at the moment. The Hawks, well, that would be one you'd probably pencil in. And then down to Skilled Stadium to see the Cats. So, big job ahead of the Tigers. Very disappointing result today. Although, when you say the pencil in the Hawks, you probably would have penciled in Carlton today. So, job ahead of them. Whitnell over the top with a fist. Delidio hemmed into the line gets the handball away Bowden the centering kick's gonna work and Pettifer takes the mark junk time now Blues have got this one well and truly done they have been very good today Carlton nothing away from them they've earned this win with some very good hard disciplined footy Against a good outfit. Kane Pettifer. Straight in front. Should convert. And he has. Second goal for the quarter for Kane Pettifer. The Tigers just, uh, well, fighting it out. Kicked four goals in the last quarter. The Blues have kicked three. So uh, to win the last quarter would be something, I guess. Delidier's had another good day. Pettifer's tried hard. Bowden's been a bit quiet, but some of their big leaders, Kane Johnson, hasn't had a big impact on the game. Mark Coughlin hasn't had a big impact on the game. 35-point margin. With under a minute remaining. And the Blues are going to celebrate this one. And the Tigers, Gary, where does that leave them? Well... I think it leaves Terry Wallace with a really good understanding of where his club's at. We've seen their next four. Here's the Blues' next four rounds. They've got Port Adelaide at the MCG. The Pies, that'll be some sort of game at the MCG. Essendon and also the Kangaroos. Bowden. Long ball, Stafford. Simmons now. Ball is taken from his grass, picked up by Pettifer. Free kick, Richmond here. Opportunity to score. To Coglin. Yeah, Coglin's had his colours lowered today by Nick Stevens. A bit of jump time has, uh, has been pointed out. No Matthew Richardson, who was lost to the Tigers after being knocked out in that first 15 minutes. But, gee, I'm not sure the way that this game's panned out, although it makes a difference. But Carlton take absolutely nothing away. They have deserved this victory today. Well, does a side that's pushing for the eight. Gary, do they deserve to be in the eight if they're losing to a side that's won just two games for the year? Oh, that's a funny game, bro. Coughlin has got it. So all of a sudden, the margin is just 29 points, and 
It's got some respectability about it. Yeah, it's deceiving, isn't it? It really is. Yes, it is deceiving. It is. Seven goals straight. Set it up. 40 points to margin at three-quarter time. They open it up. And uh, that's enough for the Richmond coaching staff. They've seen enough. They head down. Videos tonight. Pouring over stats. Early night for Richo. No good hanging on to the phone if you feel eager. And there's no one up there anymore. <laughs> Last right, Carlton going to win their third game against the old rival. Scotland's just had an awesome afternoon. Eddie Betts, can they get one last goal? Chambers has taken the mark, the dish off to Bentick. Slides it in the Shags direction. And Fuddle has taken the mark. Gives the Sharon a little mini pump. Oh boy, will he milk this? Let's have a look at gonna milk this <laughs> this is what he is all about well Look done. At him. Just well done. glancing up at the board am i on well he's got to 15 seconds now after the ball lobbed in the jukes he can take us through to the six o'clock news at brennan he's heading over the 20 second mark now and what the celebration to if the goal scored securing a memorable victory i want to see the sort of celebration 30 so he has milked it beautifully but this is a nice way to finish for the Carlton Football Club. We're right behind it. Let's ride it home with Brendan Favola. Deliberate as always. Kick on the way. Great finish. Oh, yeah. Absolutely fitting way. Not so much for Brendan Favola, who was good, but fitting that the Carlton Footy Club kicked the last goal today. They have been... Absolutely magnificent, recording just their third victory of the year. And that is a 35-point margin. Well done to the Blues, well done to Dennis Pagan. Few and far between. Haven't heard this song too often. But this afternoon here at the Telstra Dome, the Blues, 22-9, 141, have defeated Richmond, 16-10, 106.